There are many types of forklifts designed to serve different purposes. The most common one is the counterbalanced forklift that is powered mechanically by an engine. or electrically by a battery. This is a reach type electrically powered forklift. In this video, you will learn basic knowledge about the counterbalanced engine powered forklift trucks. Each forklift is given a model number. For example, in this model, the first digit, 5, is the model change code. And the F stands for forklift truck. The next letter, G in this case, means that this forklift is powered by a gasoline engine. The last two digits, 25, represent the maximum load in tons divided by 10. Preceding numbers have special meaning too. The first digit, 4, represents the optional power source. The second digit, 2, represents the transmission type. Some model numbers are followed by additional characters that represent the type of attachments. Now, let's take a look at the specification sheet for a forklift. Load capacity shows the maximum weight that the forklift can handle. Load center shows the distance from the front of the vertical section of the fork to the center of gravity of the cargo when the mast is in the upright position. Maximum fork height shows the vertical distance from the ground level to the upper side of the fork when the fork is in the fully raised position carrying the load with the mast in the upright position. Free lift shows the maximum height the fork can be raised from the ground with the mast in the upright position without changing the mast height. Turning radius outside shows the radius of the tread of the rear part of the forklift. When it is moving forward at the lowest speed without load and at the maximum steering angle. Overall height shows the height from the ground level to the highest point of the vehicle with the fork in the fully lowered position. These are the meanings of the main figures in a specification sheet. A counterbalanced forklift mainly consists of these parts. It is driven by the front wheels. The forklift is steered by the rear wheels. Forklifts have a hydraulic system to operate the load handling unit. Each forklift has a balance weight at the back. The balance weight ensures a balance at the front axle between the front and rear parts of the forklift when a load is put on the fork. 
Therefore, when the cargo is lifted at the front tip of the fork, or when the mast is raised high with the cargo on the fork, the center of gravity moves to the front or to a higher point and the forklift will tumble forward as a result. The load capacity curve shows the relationship between the center of gravity and the permissible loads. In the case of a forklift having a maximum load capacity of two tons, the standard load center is set at 500 millimeters and the lift at 4,000 millimeters. This graph shows how much the permissible load weight should be reduced when the center of load is moved forward from the standard load center. For example, when the center of gravity is 900 millimeters, the graph shows the permissible load is 1,400 kilograms. It means that front to rear stability is maintained within that range. The permissible load weight also changes by the amount of lift. This graph shows how much the permissible load weight is reduced as the amount of lift increases. A load capacity chart is attached to each forklift. These graphs show the permissible load when the forklift is on a level surface. Therefore, the center of gravity will change if the forklift is on a slope, and this may present a danger of falling. For this reason, the fork must always face uphill when driving the forklift up or down a slope. Naturally, the right to left balance is also important. Now, let's see how the forklift operation is controlled. The power to drive the forklift is created by the engine and transmitted to the clutch, to the transmission, to the propeller shaft, to the differential, and finally to the drive wheels. Forklifts are powered by a gasoline engine that is fueled by gasoline or LPG or by a diesel engine fueled by light oil. In a gasoline-fueled engine, the fuel and air are mixed in the carburetor. And the air-fuel mixture is sent to the cylinder in the engine and compressed by the piston. The mixture is ignited and burned by the spark plug to create the necessary power. In a forklift powered by LPG fuel, the fuel system consists of a solenoid valve that sends and cuts the fuel according to the key switch operation, a regulator that vaporizes the fuel and maintains the vapor pressure at a constant level, and an LPG carburetor. When you compare forklift engine performance with that of an engine on an automobile, you will see that the forklift engine yields large torque at low engine speed, and the maximum engine RPM is kept very low. This is because a forklift does not need to travel at a high speed, and also to protect the oil pump and increase the engine's durability. The maximum RPM of a gasoline engine is controlled by an air governor, which is located under the carburetor.
In a diesel engine that burns light oil, only air is let into the cylinder. And then compressed by the piston to increase the air temperature. The light oil fuel is pressurized by the injection pump. and injected into the hot cylinder from the injection nozzle. When the fuel contacts the hot air in the cylinder, it ignites and burns spontaneously to create the necessary power. The power is transmitted to the clutch first. The clutch is located between the engine and the transmission, and it connects and disconnects the power as needed. The clutch consists of the clutch cover, which is fitted to the flywheel, which is directly connected to the engine's output shaft, and the clutch disc, which is connected to the input shaft of the transmission. The clutch disc is pushed directly against the flywheel by the pressure plate of the clutch cover. As a result, the engine power is transmitted to the transmission. When the clutch pedal is depressed, the pressure plate separates from the clutch disc and the power is no longer transmitted. As the clutch pedal is released, the pressure plate starts pushing the clutch disc and the power is transmitted again. The power is now connected to the transmission. The transmission moves the forklift to the front or rear as the case may be. It also converts and increases the engine torque. A manual transmission has several gears. The gear combination can be changed by shift lever operation to transmit the engine power to the drive wheels as needed for forklift operation. Another type of transmission is the power shift transmission, having a torque converter that uses a special fluid to transmit the power. A torque converter generally consists of two vanes facing each other and a stator at the center. The torque converter is filled with fluid. A pump impeller is fitted to the flywheel of the engine. When the impeller starts turning, it creates a flow of fluid, which in turn causes the turbine runner to rotate. The oil flow is controlled by the stator, and the torque increases as a result. The turbine runner is connected to the input shaft of the transmission. The engine power is transmitted continuously via the fluid flow to the transmission. The shift lever is operated. to activate a hydraulic unit. To activate a multiple clutch in the transmission for moving forward or backward and move the forklift to the front or rear. A forklift with a power shift transmission also has an inching pedal that enables inching operation of the forklift truck during loading and unloading operations. The inching pedal is designed to control the hydraulic function of the transmission. It disconnects the power and engages the brake at the same time. The two simultaneous actions enable inching operation of the forklift truck. The engine power is transmitted from the transmission 
to the propeller shaft and to the differential. The power is reduced in speed but increased in torque by the differential, divided into two lines and transmitted to the wheels. There are several types of forklift tires, pneumatic tires, cushion tires and solid tires. Forklifts have hydraulic power assisted steering so that they are operated by a small steering force. The steering wheel shaft extends downward and is connected to the steering gear box. Inside the gearbox, the steering wheel shaft is engaged with the cross shaft via ball nuts. The pitman arm is fitted to the cross shaft. The rotary movement of the steering wheel is changed to a linear movement of the pitman arm by those steering components. The pitman arm extends below the vehicle and a drag link is fitted to it. The drag link extends under the vehicle to the rear and is connected to a bell crank along with the power cylinder. As the steering wheel is turned, the spool valve located inside the steering gearbox switches the oil passages according to the rotation of the steering wheel. And the power cylinder rod moves linearly to provide the steering assist power. The linear movement of the rod is changed to a lateral movement by the bell crank and the wheels are steered accordingly. Forklifts are steered by the rear wheels, therefore the rear part of the vehicle draws a circle when it turns. The brake system includes the brake pedal and the brake master cylinder that is activated by the brake pedal. As the brake pedal is depressed, the piston of the brake master cylinder displaces the fluid. And pushes the piston of the wheel cylinder at the brake unit of the front wheel. The brake shoe is pushed against the brake drum and the wheel is caused to stop by the friction force of the drum. Forklifts also have a parking brake. Let's look at the load handling equipment now. There are several types of masts, such as the V-mast, SV-mast, FV-mast, and FSV-mast. Let's study the V-mast in some detail. The load handling unit mainly consists of the outer mast, the inner mast, the chain, the lift bracket, the forks, the backrest, and the lift cylinders. 
The entire load handling unit is supported by the mast bracket at the bottom of the front axle and by the tilt cylinders at the top of the body frame. Now, let's examine the relationship between the telescopic movement of the piston rods and the movement of the forks. We will use this model as an example. The chain is fixed at one end. The other end of the chain is left free. As the piston rod extends out, it pushes the chain upward and also raises the free end of the chain. The amount of rise is equal to twice the amount of extension of the piston rod. In reality, the chain is fixed to the outer mast at one end and to the lift bracket at the other end. The chain is hooked to the chain wheel at the top of the inner mast. The end of the piston rod of the lift cylinder is fitted to the inner mast. As the piston rod extends out, it pushes the inner mast and the chain at the same time. As a result, the fork is raised twice the distance the piston rod is extended. The lift bracket moves up and down along the inner mast. The inner mast moves up and down along the outer mast. The loading operation is activated by hydraulic units. One of the hydraulic units is the oil pump, which is powered by the engine. It scoops up the oil from the oil tank and sends it to the hydraulic circuit. The oil contacts the oil control valve. When the lift lever is operated to raise the forks, the lift spool valve opens the oil passage to the lift cylinder. The piston in the lift cylinder is pushed out by the oil and extends the lift cylinder rod. The forks are raised as a result. When the lift lever is operated to lower the forks, the lift spool valve forms an oil passage to return the oil from the lift cylinder to the oil tank. This causes the forks to go down naturally by the weight of the forks and other components and the weight of the load. For safety purposes, the lowering speed of the forks is kept constant regardless of a change in the weight of the load by a flow regulator valve located under the lift cylinder. In addition, a safety down valve is located at the bottom of the other lift cylinder. This valve prevents the forks from falling unexpectedly due to malfunction of the flow regulator. Now, let's look at the mechanism that tilts the mass